This is uh, question 34 from chapter 3. Uh, and uh, it says, first of all, let's do A, compute the mean and standard deviation for the points scored by the winning team. Okay, so uh, for uh, the mean, we're going to go equals average. It's the winning team, so we just want these points here. Drag that down. And so the mean is 77 points. It also asks us for the standard deviation. So you go equals stdev and then drag this down. And the standard deviation is a tad over 7. But quite honestly, let's uh, reduce that all the way to 7. Okay, So we've got that. Now, it asks us to assume that the points scored follow a bell-shaped distribution. So when it says bell-shaped, that means that uh, you have some sort of a um, normal distribution. So we could use the empirical rule. But let's check the distribution of uh, winning teams. This is practice using histogram. So insert pivot table. And here is the data that we want. Um, and we want actually to have this data here. Sorry, I better go back. Uh, insert pivot table. Yes. And so we want points to go down into row labels and values and count. So we have some distribution here that kind of looks a bit like it might be a normal distribution. Let's try that. Insert column. Hmm, there we go. So yes, it looks pretty much like a normal distribution. So uh, don't forget to change the title. So I'll uh, just call it points, right? Just so we've got something there. And uh, I'm going to copy and paste this onto the other data page so that uh, we can compare the two. Data is here. And here is our histogram. Let's get it a bit smaller, ridiculously big. OK, now the reason for having this here is that I want you to see uh, what, in fact, we're doing with the next question, which is, what's the estimate of the percentage of all NCAA games in which the winning team scored 84 or more points? So 84 or more is going to be somewhere here, isn't it? You see? 84 or more. So we want something to the right of 84. Something to the right of 84. Now, we know that 68%, uh, let's use, I'm over on the right here, 68% of all of the observations will be within one standard deviation of the mean. Right. So what, what is one standard devi deviation of the mean? We know that the mean is 77. We calculated that before. So therefore, the mean minus one standard deviation is 70 to 84. And we got 84 by 77 plus 7. So 68% of them are going to be within that range here, 70 to 84. We were asked what greater than 84, greater than 84. So in other words, if 84 is down here somewhere, we want to have greater than 84. So that's one standard deviation above the mean, isn't it? 77 to 84. So therefore, we want this area to the right of 84. We know that 68% of it is covered within 70 to 84. So therefore, 100 minus 68 equals 32. 32% of it must be smaller than 70 or larger than 84. 
Now we've got two tails here, smaller than or larger than, but actually the question just asks you for greater than 84, greater than 84. So greater than 84 is going to be 32 divided by 2. So that's going to equal 16. There's going to be 16% in each tail. So the percentage uh, asked in the question, score more than 84, is going to be 16%, 16%. Now the next question, uh, winning team scores more than 90, more than 90. So let's try this again. 77 plus and then 2 times 7 equals 91. So more than 90, 91 is more than 90, isn't it? So that is going to be two standard deviations. See how I put in 2 times 7, 2 times 7, two standard deviations. So two standard deviations either side of the mean is 95%. Now, following the same logic as we just did with the 68%, 100 minus 95 equals 5. So therefore, we've got 5% smaller than 77 minus 14 and larger than 91. Because this is symmetric, two-tailed, greater than, that tail only, is going to be 5 over 2 equals 2.5. So therefore, 2.5% of the games is going to be greater than 90. Greater than 90. Now, while we're talking about this, let's just finish off this question by uh, completing I'll just clear away this stuff here. Uh, completing the next part of it, which was to uh, find out whether there is any outliers in the meaning winning margin. So this is the z-score method. So what we need to do, first of all, is we need to find out the mean and the standard deviation for the winning margin. So the winning margin has a mean of 12 and let's work out the standard deviation equals st dev So let's reduce that we don't need so many uh, decimal places uh, one decimal place is quite enough really now let's do the z-score method, the z-score method. So remember what we're trying to do. z for each observation equals xi for that observation minus x bar all divided by s. So we're measuring how many standard deviations each observation is away from the mean. So go equal and then open the brackets. We want xi so click on 24 minus the mean, press F4 to lock it, close the brackets, divided by the standard deviation of 7.9 in this case, press F4 again to lock it. So therefore the z-score for this first one, 24, is 1.496. This means that 24 is 1.496 standard deviations greater than the mean. Drag it down and the calculations should follow. And we can see that the sum z scores are greater, are positive, and some z scores are negative. Are there any of them larger than 3? No. Are there any of them smaller than minus 3? No. Therefore, there are no observations. There are no observations. Let's just change this, just for demonstration. Okay, so let's change this one to something like uh, 1, just for fun, and see what happens. 
No, we still don't have any. Uh, let's try this one. Let's change this one to 42. No, still none. Let's try this one to 60. No, so it's pretty stable here, isn't it? So you need to be able to change the numbers around, see what's happening with the standard deviations, etc. So going back to the original numbers, there were no observations which were, I'm just going back to what they were, were before, no observations which were outliers because none were greater than plus three standard deviations and none were smaller than that. Thank you.